Hello and welcome to One Geezer's Garage. I'm Wayne Powell, the head geezer. If you're uh, watching this, then you're already familiar with the small block Chevy V8 engine and the fact that for more than 50 years it's been the hot rodder's delight. It's been one of the best high performance engines, one of the most popular high performance engines ever made. Several reasons for it. Starting in 1955 when it was introduced, it was lightweight, compact, put out quite a bit of power, was easy to work on. After a while, lots of people made parts for it. And it not only performed well in the vehicles that it came in, but it was also really popular for swapping into other vehicles like early Fords, Model A's, 32's, 33, 34 Fords, 40 Fords, all of the 30's and 40 Fords. Uh, people started making adapter brackets, motor mounts, all kinds of things, and that engine has been popular in all kinds of things. Um, a couple of companies have made uh, uh, have been very successful swapping small block Chevy engines into things like Jaguars and Volvos, for goodness sake. So, this little video series is about taking one of these engines, but the new generation version of it, and putting it in something that it never was designed to go in to begin with. So we're going to we're going to take on a challenge of taking one of the very latest the so-called LS1 series or Gen 3, Gen 4 series engines and putting it in a German sedan. And you can follow along and find out uh, how we solve all of the issues that come along with this. Now, to talk about the latest generation of small block Chevy engines, a lot of people refer to the family as the LS1. That's because the first ones that came out in 1997 in the Corvette were called an LS1. 1998, Firebirds and Camaros got a similar engine, tuned a little differently. And then in 99, a slightly different version, but the same family, the same architecture, was introduced in trucks and SUVs. Those first ones in the Corvettes, Camaros, and Firebirds were all aluminum, aluminum blocks, aluminum heads. The truck and SUV versions were a little different displacement and, for the most part, had cast iron blocks and aluminum heads. So the one we're looking at here is one of the SUV versions. This happens to be uh, officially known as an LH6. It's out of a 2005 GMC Envoy. Now that's the same as a Chevy Trailblazer. General Motors calls it uh, a mid-sized SUV, but anything that weighs 4,600 pounds or so doesn't seem very mid-sized to me. We're going to put this in a 3,200 pound BMW, a 1997 535 IS. I picked this particular engine because I got a deal on it. Now, it had a few issues that I knew we'd have to overcome, and we'll talk about those a little later on, but this whole family of lightweight, compact, relatively easy to work on, the, all those things that made the first generation popular are still popular, and a lot of people are putting these engines into all kinds of other vehicles. I've seen several people on the internet um, uh, who've put these into three series BMWs. A couple of guys have, uh, that I've read about have put them in similar five series to the one I'm putting this one in. But this particular engine has not been done very much yet. The Camaros, Firebird, Corvette versions and some of the early truck versions have had quite a bit of, uh, there's, there's a lot of a knowledge base out there of people who've done that. This particular one is a little different because it has so-called displacement on demand. In other words, under light throttle conditions, it actually shuts four cylinders off and just runs like a, like a V4. And so we may face some issues uh, surrounding that. The other thing that makes this one a little different is the throttle body on this is a drive-by-wire. There's no throttle cable that attaches to this. There's a sensor on the accelerator pedal and it sends electrical signal through the engine control module and up to the throttle body. So that may offer some challenges as well. So this video series is going to, uh, going to follow the progress here. The first thing we've done is to put this engine on a test stand and in the uh, edition of this video series, I'll show you how we got it on the test stand, some of the things we did to actually see if we could make this run before putting it in the vehicle. So tune in again for that next segment where we take a look at how to, how to make this engine run and um, then we'll talk about putting it in the vehicle and then you can follow along after that. So until then, this is Wayne Powell from One Geezer's Garage. See you next time.